Morning. Welcome to First Mount Bethel Missionary Baptist Church. We pray that all is well as we go through this time in which we are embracing in this pandemic moment. So we just bless God for you that are with us this morning on this morning. And we pray that the word of God will be a help to you and certainly has been a help to us as we've gone through this period. Pray that you enjoyed the musical that was presented to you earlier on this morning. And we just thank God for you. God bless each one of you. Pray that you enjoy the word that will come forth today as it will come from the book of Revelations, the 21st chapter, verses 1 through 7. We will focus on those scriptures on this morning. Uh, the message will be from the city we're in to the city that we can go. Join us this morning as we go through this message. Turning over to the book of Revelations, John writes these words while on the Isle of Patmos. Uh, he says in the 21st chapter, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with me, with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is the thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. The 21st chapter of Revelation, verses 1 through 7. This, this book is to be taken and considered, my brothers and sisters, as the book that sums up life. It, it, it is the book penned by the elder John as while well. he was exiled, you remember, on a lonely, cold island called Patmos. Patmos nowadays is considered as modern Turkey. And, and too often this book is read with just finality and closure, leaving out the picture of what could just be good and not just good. But it could be very, very, very good if we accept what's really being said. But when John wrote of this that was being revealed unto him, he exposed it, my brothers and sisters, in this book that both believers and even non-believers would know and see just what John was seeing. Thus, my brothers and my sisters, it's called Revelation. And it's called Revelation because it reveals all that was seen by John through the pull back curtain which divides heaven and earth. John had to have been divinely spiritual in order to see and reveal all that was seen and written of in this book. John had to have a relationship good with God. In other words, he had to have been connected with the Lord God in order to see or been granted to see and reveal just what was being seen. Do I have a witness here? Seen within the corridors of space that separates the two heaven and earth. You and I can't see that far. Am I right about it? Let, let me say that another way. We, we, we can't see what John saw with the physical eye. 2020, 40, 40, or even 60, 60. We can't see that far 
in our humanity. We, we, we just can't see that far. Glasses are bifocals, contact. We can't even get beyond the first level of the clouds. Am I right about it here? God, my brothers and sisters, in his divine makeup of man, God had a reason for doing what he did for us. God, God limited our vision, our sight ability, and that's probably a really good thing as well because some of us, we see more than we need to see anyway. Am I right about it here? There's a name for that when we, when we, when we see more than we need to see. We call it nosy. But respectfully, God has limited that that we can see to that of the stratosphere. Am I right about it here? And with additional help, we can look beyond the alto stratosphere. And, and, and then with additional, additional help, we can even look into the stratosphere. Surrounded stratosphere. Paul considered this meon in his second letter to the Corinthian church in, in chapter number 12, verse number 2. Paul, when he spoke of this area that John looked beyond, Paul called it the third heaven. But, but never, never, never has there been a lens or nor have I heard anyone say that they have actually been able to see into heaven. With John, John in his writing, John declares here that the glory of God exists. Read down there, verse number 11. It's there. I've only heard it sung about, but, but only through the imagination of what John saw in that 21st verse of the 12th, uh, 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 of 12 pearly gates. He spoke of 12 pearly gates. And then he also spoke of, 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 of golden pain streets with, with a glassy texture. We, we might develop a picture in our mind of what he saw or has written. And, and, and that's good in its own way because imagination can sometimes be good. Am I talking to anybody in here this morning? I said, imagination can sometimes be good. Imagination can sometimes help us to strive to do better when, when we got a real good imagination. Am I right about it here? Imagination can make us push beyond the obstacles of life if we got a real good imagination. Am I right about it here? I imagine what the world would be like if we didn't have crime in my imagination. If we didn't have murder, and I wonder what the world would be like if we didn't have mobsters, or what the world would be like if sin would divert its natural cause, come on somebody, help me now, and start bothering people enough that they grow a desire to stop sinning. I, I, can, I, can, I can only imagine what the church would really look like that Jesus built he did build the church, didn't he? What the church would really look like if the church would be that that Christ built. So being imaginative could have its pluses. Being imaginative could help us to want to do better in our lives. Being imaginative can help us to see life in a better realm. Am I right about it here? But that also would be the only way the sight of heaven can be seen until Jesus himself opens the eastern sky of his return. Is that through our imagination too? Do I have any takers waiting on that day when Jesus opens the eastern sky and come back? Heaven's curtains will be pulled back and the apocalyptic times, the Armageddon times will be over. Time of choice and decision will cease. In other words, when that day shall befall before us, the decision should have already been made. Tell somebody, tell somebody that knew you this morning, don't mess around and miss your chance to make the right decision. We, we too often, my brothers and sisters, we as Christians, we as people, we too often look for this type of message 
doing a home going service. But now, as, as frequent as death is in our time, we can't afford to wait on a home going to share that that could be of a help to us right now. And I'm right about here. And somebody needs to know that the city we're in right now can't compare to the city that awaits those of us that are part of the body of believers. I wish I had a witness in here this morning. I said, we can't afford to wait to see if the new Jerusalem is going to be better than what we are in down here. You want to tell somebody, then tell yourself in case it slipped your mind that there is a better place. Yes, there is a better place that awaits us with the Lord. Problem is, you can't get there on your own personality. Have I got a witness in here? That's the problem. You can't get to heaven on your own goods. No, 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 no. You, you can't slip into heaven because of who you knew or who you were here. But what you are will determine your placement in heaven. Have I got a witness in Well, Pastor, you mean? What do you mean? You, you mean I served all these years with this title of who I am and it won't get me there? Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. That's exactly what I'm saying. That, that's exactly what I meant. God's only title, he's looking to enter into his kingdom, is Christian, saint, child of the king. And let me help somebody here this morning. That's not a title. More than a way in which we should live. Christian is not a title. But it's a way of life. Have I got a witness here? Saint is not a title. But it's a way of life. It's the way we should live. Child of the king. Help me somebody here this morning. Is a way in which we should live. In other words. Your title is good for earthly use and earthly status. But the inside you, do I have a witness in here this morning? I said the inside you, that that's on the inside of you. What's on the inside of you? The ticket is in the, on the inside of you. The new city that John parallels and that'll be in the New Jerusalem. In order to get into that city, it's determined, it's determined and dependent upon what's on the inside of you. And so, my brothers and sisters, as we dip into this chapter of this book called Revelations, it is this book that can be viewed and seen as a book filled with drama, incomparable to any form or format of literature or rap in which by numerous symbols, seals, sevens of churches, trumpets, bones, and many, many classes. It's this book that opens the window for things to come through to pull back curtain. To pull back curtain. Somebody ought to say pull back. To pull back curtain that was granted to John to share with both believers and to also share with non-believers. In other words, you still have time. <laughs> Have we got a witness here? You still have time. It opens the chimerical window of things that will unfold and things that are unfolding within our very presence. Tell somebody, you better open your eyes and see what it is. I, I'm no prophet. And being what doesn't really matter to what has already been prophetically penned for our viewers. In other words, the time of which we're in is a time that has already been described as a time that's facing the end. So in my horn blowing warm moment, and in my horn blowing warning, and in my TDJs, get ready, get ready, get ready. You that are prepared for the return of the Lord need to get ready because from what has been revealed, the Lord is ready to make his return. I wish I had a witness in here this morning. Somebody will know that the Lord is on his way back. You'll hear somebody. The Lord is on his way back, whether you believe it or not. He's on his way back. And John has declared that there is a better city. John said there is a better place. That the one we're in in his revelation, he was revealed to see a new heaven and a new earth. In which the first heaven and earth both were passed away. And even, he said, the sea. And from there, John saw the new heaven. And 
and up as an adorned bride for her husband. Have a God of You can imagine that, that, that it had to be a beautiful city. If he saw it as a bride adorned for her, it had to be a made up city. Had to be to ultimate perfection. And it is coming. John says that the love and protection of God overtakes the saints, the believers, the children of God, and releases them, listen to this, from the earthly turmoil of life. And he clears their eyes of tears and takes away dying and the pain of death. Then, 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 at the declaration, after his authority, he tells John in the fifth chapter, fifth verse, he says to write, write that you can rest assured that all is well, and that I am the beginning and the end. Do I have a witness here? He said, I am Alpha and Omega. In other words, the beginning and the end, and, and that would mean in my eyes of Jesus that the city we dwell in is not the city that we can have. Have I got a witness here? And it lies and depends on those that Jesus declared in the Beatitudes of Matthew 5 and 6 uh, of being thirsty for the righteousness of God. Uh, look at what he says. Uh, and they that shall be filled. He says in verse number 6, he says, And said unto me, it is done that I am Alpha and Omega, uh, the beginning and the end. Uh, I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. In other words, it lies uh, and depends on those uh, that Jesus truly declared, uh, those that hunger and thirst after righteousness. Uh, yes, uh, this helps us to understand the songwriter with his words when he said, none but the righteous uh, shall see God. Uh, yes, uh, if you're going to make it into that city, uh, if you're going to go uh, to that place uh, where Job declared uh, that the wicked will cease from troubling, uh, yes, uh, and the weariness comes to a rest. Uh, in verse number 7 uh, of this chapter 21, uh, Jesus says, uh, He that overcometh uh, shall inherit all things, uh, yes, uh, and I will be his God, uh, and he shall be my son. Uh, Yes, uh, to overcome uh, and inherit all things, uh, we must accept God uh, as being our God. Uh, yes, uh, and Jesus as being uh, his son. Uh, well, uh, the son uh, that was given uh, as a ransom, uh, we must accept him uh, as being the son of God. Uh, yes, uh, he was the son, uh, yes, uh, that gave his life uh, that we might live. Uh, Yes, uh, and in his giving uh, of his life, uh, yes, uh, he kept us out of uh, the very pits of hell. Uh, yes, uh, he was uh, the son uh, that John declared uh, in his writing. Uh, yes, uh, chapter number three uh, of being uh, the only begotten son. Uh, yes, uh, that died. Uh, yes, uh, his dying. Uh, have a God with his ear. Uh, yes, uh, purchased the ticket. Uh, Yes, uh, that we might be able, uh, yes, uh, to enter uh, into the new city. Do I have a witness here? Uh, so my question to you this morning, uh, as I close, uh, do you have your ticket? Uh, yes, uh, to go to uh, the new city of Jerusalem. Uh, am I right about it here? Uh, John uh, had uh, the pen uh, to write the revealed word of God. Uh, yes, uh, that's why uh, in the writing, uh, you will see every now and then, uh, God, uh, yes, uh, through the divine work of the Holy Spirit, uh, yes, uh, would tell John uh, to write, uh, yes. Uh, and so John uh, began to write, uh, yes, uh, about this new city. Uh, have I got a witness here, uh, this new Jerusalem? Uh, I don't know about you this morning, uh, but I don't want uh, the city that I'm in uh, to be my last place of living. Uh, have I got a witness here? I don't want uh, my city uh, that I'm living in now uh, to be my last place. Uh, have I got a witness here of residence? Uh, yes, uh, but I believe this morning uh, that if I keep my trust uh, and my hope uh, and my faith in God, uh, that soon uh, and very soon, uh, yes, uh, I will be able uh, when the Lord comes uh, to go back home uh, 
in that new city. Uh, yes, uh, that new Jerusalem uh, that John writes about. Will you be ready to go back to that new city, that new Jerusalem? We can't get there on our own merits. We can't get there on looking good. Can't get there on saying good. Can't get there on titles. But we get there by what's on the inside of us. Jesus gives all of us an, an opportunity to be a part of the family of believers. He won't force his way on him, but truly through his word, he says, I stand at the door and knock. And if any man will open up that door, I will come in and sup with him and he with me. If you plan on going to that city that John was able to see, that physical eyes will never see, if you plan on going to that city, You've got to be right with God. Ask yourself this morning, do I want to go to that city or do I want to remain a part of the city that I'm in? The message this morning, from the city we're in to the city that we can go. God bless you this morning. God keep you is our prayers. If you're out there this morning without a church home, I invite you to come to get to know the Lord. I invite you to open that door. And so we open the door of the church now, wherever you are. We offer Christ to you, all my brothers, all my sisters. He will bring you brand new life. Just come. Wherever you are, just come. Scripture says this, and you might say, you may try to make an excuse and say, I don't have no church to go to this morning to come. But it's not about the building that you go to. It's about speaking it into existence. Paul wrote to the church in Rome. Paul said this, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, he said, they shall be saved. So it's not about the building. This building that we're in right now can be a grocery store next week, can be a nightclub next week, tomorrow. But it's the building that's on the inside. It's the door that stands there ajar, allowing Christ to come in. Open up your hearts this morning to receive it. Paul also said to that church in Rome, he said, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, he said, thou shalt be saved. I just want to help you this morning if you're out there. If you have not accepted Christ, I just want to be the one to help you this morning to get on the right track. We're in this city, wherever you are this morning, listening to this message. You're in a city by name this morning. But there's a greater city to go to called heaven. Don't you want to go to that land? God bless you again. God keep you is our prayer.